morning, 29th of December. It's back to those days of the week again that we're trying to work out between Christmas and New Year. But it is Tuesday, Tuesday, the 29th of December. With Christmas past, we can perhaps just breathe. That Christmas has come and is now past. Turn the page of the diary even, a brand new week. And so perhaps the question is, well, now what? Now what is a question we've been asking, of course, for, well, forever, basically, but certainly since um, March time, a long time since, every week. Now what? Now what? And with Christmas past, that has always been the question. Now what? Usually it's been preparing for the next gathering, the hug money or New Year's Day gathering, family, friends, parties. <clears throat> of course, that's not going to be happening now. We have not required or, or not, we're not required to do that shopping. We're not required to get all that food in because we're in lockdown and we're tier four, whatever. So perhaps just a wee chance to, to take a break. Maybe a chance to write our thank you cards, to watch some more repeats on the telly. There's one or two of them around. Play the new games that we've got with the family, the board games, if you've got family. Can't rush to the essential shops. We could replenish our food stores. We could do all of that. <clears throat> but what I have to show you is maybe something along those lines, but not particularly and not entirely First of all, to show you that I have been, you know, doing what I shouldn't be doing. I've been stockpiling. Yeah, OK, fair enough. But also to show you um, some gifts that I got. I got a couple of new nativity sets. Here's one of them. Now, that might take a little bit of thinking about. Thinking about someone who's used what is round about. The placing of them. You get the idea of who they are. There are three with gold rims around their top, so presumably the kings with their crowns on. Smaller one presumably has got to be Jesus, so Mary and Joseph beside them and the shepherds with the wool or the fleece. We make of it what we can and what we will, which is pretty much what we do with the nativity story. We've got to think about it, imagine and ponder and think what we learn anew. And sometimes we need these fresh nativities to look at, to think about. The other one I'm going to show you, I've, I've really, the reason I'm showing you it today of all days is because um, it's, it's not going to survive for very long. The other one is very much of the moment. Um, the trouble is it can't remain of the moment because it's this one. And I'll show you quite close up. There are the kings with the star. Mary and Joseph with the baby and a donkey and a shepherd, an angel and a sheep. And the reason I've really got to show you that one today and that was the urgency is because that one is made out of gingerbread. Hand iced, all very beautiful, hand iced and absolutely glorious. But... You've just got to eat it. It can't be left lying. It can't just be put in a drawer. It can't be put away for next year. It has got to be taken internally. That's the best medicine, isn't it? The, the gifts that you can have to eat internally. It's a very sweet story. But that sweet story, that nativity story, needs to be inside us. In more ways than one in this case, certainly. But it needs to be inside us. That nativity story is what we need to, to carry around with us. Not packed away till next year, but carried in us, in our hearts and in our minds and in our, our entire being. The story of God coming to be with us. The good news is not to be stockpiled. It's not to be put away for a rainy day. It is, let's face it, the rainiest of days or perhaps where you are, the snowiest of days. But it's not about the weather outside. It's about what we're dealing with. And the thing is that the nativity, the good news of the gospel, isn't here just for the rainy days and just for the bad days. 
The gospel of good news is to help us to understand that no matter how we feel, even when we feel brilliant, this good news makes it better. So this certainly is not something to be packed away. Perhaps in past years, this time between Christmas and New Year, we'd be thinking about what it is that we would be doing next year. Getting those new diaries out and filling them in with all the big events, the holidays, the times away. And, and at the moment, I don't think many of us are actually doing that. We're taking it still, just turn the page, what's there, turn the page, what's there. Because no matter how much we plan anyway, we really don't know what's going to crop up, what's going to happen, how things are going to be. And never more than this year, of course. I've never made New Year's resolutions. I tend to make everyday resolutions. And whether it's New Year's resolutions or, or everyday resolutions, I've come to discover that I break them just as quickly anyway. So it makes no odds. But the resolution that we really should be making is to take with us what we've learned from lockdown and COVID and being isolated and losing our freedoms and not being able to worship together. We need to take with us the lessons that we've learned in that. And we do that in the context now, certainly, most importantly now, of the good news of Jesus coming to be with us. We do all of that and we look forward in all of that and we, we place our priorities in order in that context of knowing that God is with us. Bad things were happening then when Jesus was born in Bethlehem all those years ago. There was darkness all around. People were not free to move around as they wanted. They had to do as they were told by others. And so it is with us at the moment. Restricted and restrained by a virus, by statistics and numbers and by fear of spreading to other people. Not even just getting it for ourselves, but spreading to other people something they cannot cope with. And what Jesus comes to say is, I want to spread amongst you something to help you cope, something to help you make the best of every day. Now, I've got, as you know, numerous nativities, most of which have not been out this year, to be fair. But no matter how many I have and how many I unpack every year and put away every year, what is important is not what I pack away, but what I take with me. What I put in my heart to take with me, what I learn in my head that goes with me, and what God gives to my spirit to help me to stay buoyant, uplifted. I won't say sane because that's long gone, but to stay in a state where we are, I am, able to live day by day. Challenges come constantly and as always some of those challenges are things we could never have foreseen and nothing to do with Covid that we need to deal with on a daily basis. It's the daily basis that God comes for. It's the daily basis that is most important to God's relationship with us. Not one day a year but daily, every day single day. Let us pray. Lord, this is a time to review again. A time to plan for the future again. A time to stop and let you, God, let you truly come into our hearts and our minds and our spirits to be born in us and to be with us. Time for us to give you your place the creator of all, the companion to all, and the presence in all. This is a time to give thanks. Thanks for our loved ones, those we have by our sides, those we have seen over these past few days, those who are far away. To give thanks for our loved ones, remembering those in hospitals and care homes and loved ones who are now with you, healed, and restored. A time to give thanks that in your creating of all 
You knew and you know what our needs would be and are. For they are your needs too. To live in relationship. To share. To love. To care. To be family. Now is a time to pray for loved ones. That their lives will be led with compassion. Compassion given and received. That they will discover on their unique path through life, that you are beside them and that on that path with you, they will find joy and peace and be fulfilled. Now is the time to pray for our loved ones of, of every generation, the young and the older, the mature, the growing, and for each one to remember, especially those who are hurting, those who are in pain, those who are facing a life that has suddenly changed and is very different now. Loved ones nearing the end of their earthly life and loved, one, loved ones anxious for themselves and for those closest to them. To pray for friends who are struggling and for friends who need to feel you close. This is a time to pray for our community and our country, remembering our leaders, the experts in their fields, those required to make decisions that affect everyone, short term and long term. Decisions that affect health on every level, that affect economy and jobs, that affect feelings of worth and fears of today and tomorrow. Lord, give leaders discernment, give them courage and strength to make the right decisions, the best decisions of the moment, and give to each some time to rest. Help them to cope with each day. It's a time to remember and pray for faith communities, for leaders there faced with changing restrictions and faced with making decisions that affect so many more. Give grace and mercy, give understanding and help each one who's struggling within their faith community and those who are struggling, feeling isolated from their faith community. And Lord, we take this time to pray for ourselves that you'll give us determination fortitude and rest. For in this week we look back and we look ahead. May we see that the way ahead, hard though it may be, is travelled with you and help us to step forward in faith and hope and joy. We pray at the end of this year ready to begin a new year. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who came not just for a day and not just for a season, but for all time. And we pray in the power of the Holy Spirit with us even now, ready to hold us and lift us, to embrace us in arms of tenderness and gentleness and love. Amen. looking towards the end of the year and, and well remembering what we did used to do and what we can no longer do but what we might be doing now so maybe you're a bit of a loose end at Hugmoney if you are Jude and Hannah are organising a quiz um, for Hugmoney evening so if you like details of that the Zoom connection for that then contact the office or, or through one of us we'll manage to get the Zoom code to you so we'll maybe see you there and as we go our way, I can only say one further thing, that hard though it may be, and though I am sure, personally, I will probably find it much harder to eat a donkey than even the baby Jesus. We've got to start somewhere. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your nativity. And say farewell to one wise man who's just getting ready for my coffee break. God bless you.